here is my somewhat finished P51. I still got work to do to it with the 57 inch wing span. I painted my my spinner a bright aluminum silver just my personal preference. I have some World War II pinup nose art I kinda put on there for a personal touch. But this is the P-51 Mustang with a 57 inch wingspan from Airfield. There's the pilot. He looks happy, don't he? He looks like he's ready to go airborne. This is a foam. I wouldn't call it styrofoam. I forget what they call it, but it's a foam plane. Real lightweight. Got a pretty good sized motor in it. As you can see, it's Pretty detailed. I still got some decals to put on there. You can get those decals on eBay under World War II pinup stickers or pinup art. Now we'll go to the underside and show you what it looks like. As you can see, I've got mine sitting on milk crates. It's perfect. It straddles them just perfect. The landing gear just fits perfect. Come up here underneath and show you the retractable landing gear. These little guns right there. Scale little rubber wheels. They're kind of a hard plastic, really. But they look pretty good. It's got some cool little lights in the wings, which are right there on the wing tips that light up, flaps, ailerons, pretty well detailed for a foam plane, they call it EVO foam. See some of the still gotta hook these up. Not real crazy about how you mount them, but they're just little plastic things as you can see there. I'll try to I'm having a lot of problems with those things. They don't look like they'll hold up. And they only give you two screws to put in there, and I've got to finish putting the screws in. Don't really like these things right here. I'm not sure which hole you're supposed to put those in. It doesn't really tell you. Maybe it's so you can adjust them to your own preference. Maybe one of you guys out there could tell me, because I don't have a clue. And it comes with a retractable rear landing landing gear. Show you here if I can get the light.
Pretty neat. Retractable landing gear. And that's on the tail. So if any of you are thinking about buying one, and here's an idea. See, I had trouble trying to figure out what those were supposed to do. They didn't exactly come out and tell you in the instructions. I figured it out. They're kind of a washer for the other side of the flap or earlier on or wing. And the canopy has a magnet in the back that holds it to the fuselage, which I'm going to put either more magnets in or some Velcro along the sides. And it does have some gauges, or if I can get the light to quit shining, you can kind of see the little gauges that the little mannequin pilot there has got to keep his eye on. Comes with exhaust. Those glue on, I used not the glue they gave me, but liquid nails. I find liquid nails will hold anything together. So that's what I put mine on with was liquid nails. The stickers and decals were already on here. I didn't have to put them on. They put them on for you. I've never put one of these together, but I used to build models as a kid that were so realistic looking people were paying me to put them together, but I've never put one of these together. As I said, the decals were already on it. It was already taped and strapped and painted. All you got to do is put these. The wires are already ran. The servos are already in. These are the things you got to put on. These, these things here. And you need to mount them really secure. And these rods, control rods that control the, the flaps, the ailerons, and the rudder. If you're not sure, ask somebody for help. And they all have to be facing the same way. They can't be turned out or turned the wrong way. They all face inwards like that. I'm trying to get a good... There's the little yoke looking thing. And there's the rod that goes to the, whatever you guys out there in the RC world call them. I call them a connector. I'm sure you guys have a terminology for them. See if I can show you the landing gear. Really sturdy landing gear. Yep. I think they'll be just fine. I wouldn't want to do a hard belly landing with them, but if you're good at coming in at landing, shouldn't have a problem. We'll go around the other side now. Again, there's your rear retracting rear landing tail gear. And there's those little washers that I had problems not knowing exactly where they went or what they did when I first seen them in the package. I'm going to put some extra screws in there. I think it ought to have four screws, not two. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But I'm going to put some extra screws in there. Just so they don't get yanked out or I lose control of the plane while it's in the air and end up crashing. 
I believe in building a better, a better mouse trap if you can, making it better than what it is. There's another rod I gotta hook up yet. Oh, come on, focus. As you can see, there's where it connects. That's what you gotta mount on when you get to plane or these plastic things. They've already got the rods installed in the plane. There's another connector with a rod. I'm assuming I've done this right. I don't know. I've never done it. And the instructions aren't real clear and you can't really see the pictures they give you because they're so small and black and white. Airfield could make the pictures a little bigger and maybe in color, a little more detail. Airfield, are you listening? I got these from nitroplanes.com. I'm sure they don't make them, they just distribute them, so I'm not blaming them, but. Pretty thick foam. It's not flimsy. Again, it has a light on that side of the wing too. They, each wing has a light. And there's the rods that you'll have to hook up. They come in a package. And those little white connectors you'll have to mount on the wing. Now they've already got the, got the servos installed. All you got to do is hook up that linkage. Those are already screwed onto the yokes or clevises, plastic clevises are already screwed onto the rod, all you gotta do is hook it up and adjust it. When you do that, you, before you take off flying and get all anxious and get in a hurry, you wanna make sure that all this works, all your flaps and rudders work and your tail rudder. I know when you get these things halfway together or about together, everybody's in a hurry to get them up in the air. But if you do and you get it up there and something comes loose or comes apart, you're going to crash your plane. And these things ain't cheap, really. They're about 250 to 280 bucks, depending on where you get them from and who you get them from. So take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Do a lot of testing. in your garage or workshop before you ever set it out in flight. Make sure everything works. Pre-trip pre it, pre-flight it. Go through your checklist. And make sure everything's right before you ever put it in the air. Which is why I'm on milk crates, because I plan on starting mine up here on milk crates. Making sure all the flaps work, and I got three of them. It took three, you can use two or whatever. I got those for free, but, or you can build your own box or whatever. But, uh, that's what it be. They're not bad. If you've never built one before, it'll be kind of intimidating to you. But as I said, take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Because if you do and you get it up in the air, something goes wrong. It could crash. So there you are. There's one of the airfield planes, as I said, I painted my spinner a bright aluminum. Now I always like to 
to use super heavy duty Aerostar motor oil in these planes. Yeah. Now, if you're wondering what the inside, this is where your battery goes. Is in here, slides in there. This is the wiring, it has all the connectors. They are somewhat, somewhat numbered. There's the servos for the rudder and tail. I'm going to try to clean up this wiring spaghetti factory that's going on in here so everything is nice and uniform as much as possible. Here's the uh, transmitter, I take it. Right there. Six channels. Uh, my antenna ain't long enough, which I believe is supposed to come out back here through that little hole. Maybe. I don't know. Somebody might tell me. But my antenna wire ain't long enough, so what do I do? Enlighten me, somebody. There's the magnet that holds the canopy on, which, and then the front half slides in into there. So, there's where your battery goes in the nose there. But there's a general idea of what you're buying, what you're getting, if you have any. Now the wiring's already installed. All you gotta do is hook the wings together, put the, the strut in, in between the wings to give it stability. Run the wires up through the fuselage, the bottom of the fuselage, and hook them to that blue transmitter right here according to those numbers. Those numbers on this blue transmitter correspond with the numbers that they've got tagged on the wires, which I can't find a good tag to show you. Now I'll show you the canopy, how it fits in there, so you don't end up breaking something when you try to take it off, because there's a certain way it's got to fit in there. Okay, here's the canopy. I have it sitting on the wing. You'll notice the front of that has a piece of styrofoam sticking out, like so. And then there's the back of the canopy. I'm going to flip it over now. There's the magnet for the canopy. There's no magnets along the side anywhere. Or in the front. But when you go to put it in and take it out, you have to insert the front of the canopy first with that little notch in there. See how that goes in there? Slides in there and then you just push the back down. And it, maybe it'll stay, but I've I've heard some YouTube users say that their canopy came out on them. So when you want to take this out, you want to lift up from the back of the canopy. Lift it up from the back. And then pull backwards. And your canopy comes out. Otherwise, if you try pulling it up from the front real hard, you may end up breaking that little piece off right there on the canopy, and you don't want to do that. So you pull up on the back of the canopy, insert it like this, so that that piece goes in there like it's supposed to, and then you push down on the back. So pull up on the back and then pull backwards towards the tail to get your canopy up. Don't want to break your canopy. We look kind of weird flying without a canopy. 
I'm going to try to put some Velcro or more magnets to hold it on there just in case I don't feel like buying a canopy if I don't have to why risk it so now I'm going to show you what they give you for a controller and the batteries I bought here's the controller that they give you it's actually pretty decent Takes eight double A batteries. Here's the battery that comes with it. The black one comes with it. It is a 14.8 2600 milliamp battery. And then I bought these blue lipos. Because I actually bought two of those planes. I bought the yellow one and the red one at the same time. And then I bought these batteries. Of course, I didn't have a way to charge them. So I ended up buying this thing, which I cannot get to work. All it does, every time I plug everything in, which I'm going to have to make another video because i got a guy going to help me, is give me the screen that says connection break. After I plug in the balancer, which comes right here after I plug in the banana connectors to the batteries and program it all I can get is connection break what does connection break mean maybe one of you guys can tell me I have no idea I've never fooled with these batteries I fool with car batteries and big truck batteries heavy equipment batteries not these little lipos so Somebody out there knows something, enlighten me. So here's my other plane that I've got still in the box. The red one. Still everything's wrapped in plastic. All the parts are there. You can see the stickers are already on it. But, I'll have them together here shortly. I'm going to take my time and not get in a hurry. I can't emphasize that enough. You get in a hurry throwing these together and something goes wrong in the air. And your plane goes out of control, you're going to crash it. So don't get in a hurry, don't get in a rush and all excited. Because you'll regret it later. No different than putting together a motor. Which is what I do. I work on engines and big truck engines and transmissions and work on riding small engine repair here at the house in my garage. And there's one of my tractors. It's a Craftsman DYT 4000. And this plane's sitting on my older 13 year old Murray riding tractor with a 16 and a half horsepower. Briggs and Stratton, so I may not know a whole lot about planes, but I'm learning. So take your time. This is Jet Ranger. I'll see you in the skies. And I will be using Skyway motor oil in my P51s. As you can see, it's specially refined Skyway motor oil, specifically for airplanes. Yeah, that ought to go over real well in that electric motor, wouldn't it? Pouring that couple of quarts down that thing. Yeah, I can see that happening. Or for some of you, 
you may wish to use air race motor oil to make your plane go faster. Yep. Uh, I'll use this in one of my planes. Yep, air race motor oil. Just gotta ask for it. It's made by Deep Rock Oil Corporation. Yep, so between Skyway and Air Race and that other motor oil, my planes ought to be the fastest in the air. Then I got my co-pilot. You can see she's ready to fly. She's she's ready to go airborne. She ain't uh, too whoopy on getting her hands dirty, but she likes her F4U Corsairs, and I like my Mustangs. I'll have to get one of them F4U Corsairs with the folding wings and retractable landing gear after I get the, the handle on these Mustangs. 